Evan, are you ready? Yeah, go. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Generation Viewpoint, episode number 15. How you doing, Ev? Pretty good. How are you? I am doing fantastic. It's a beautiful Monday. Yes, it is a Monday. I know you're looking at me because <laughs> <laughs> I get my days mixed up. I know what you're thinking right now, so, but it's all good, and here we are, another great episode. And Ev, you know, so today I was thinking about you t- uh, while I was at work, and I wanted to ask you a question. All right. So you have a milestone event coming up very shortly. Yeah. Right. And that milestone event is what? My birthday. And what age are you turning, sir? 14. No, what age are you turning? (laughs) 18. 18 years old. So I wanted to ask you, what does turning 18 mean to Evan Kongvold today? Is there any significance in turning 18 to you? I was all day while I was working, I was thinking about you. And, and this is what I was wondering. <laughs> um, the biggest one for me right now is that I will be able to stay out past 11. Now, who set that <laughs> rule? The government. Okay. <laughs> the, ma- the man's got you down. Yeah. I-, I know. Now, what about us, though? Like, if you're still living at home, like, what yeah. if we say, hey, you got to be home by 11? Then I'll be home by 11. Oh, okay. But I-, right. I asked you guys the other day, <laughs> and you were just like, yeah, we don't care as long as you keep us updated so we know you're not dead. I think this is the same day that your sister said that there's no rules or something like that, right? Was this the same Possibly. day that this all happened? I don't know. We've had that conversation a few times. <laughs> I know. We keep talking about it. It's crazy. So, But uh, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about when I turned 18, and it was like this milestone of, hey, when I'm 18, I get to do whatever I want. Right? Yeah. Do you feel that way? No. No? no. Okay. All right. I was just checking in, you know, I was just wondering (laughs) about this all day, so I don't know. And then I was also, I I don't know, been thinking a lot about you the last couple days here. We we spent a lot of time together, yeah. and this is a big year, and I'm starting to get a little uh, reminiscent as your father that you're turning 18, you're going to be graduating high school, you have all these great adventures in front of you, and so the time that mom and I get to spend with you on a daily basis might be coming to a close, so I'm getting all kinds of weird thoughts. You know, as every parent out there who's listening to this knows exactly what I'm talking about, you know? And so I I was thinking about what it turned, you know, what that means. And then the other day you put out a vlog, which we haven't talked about that yet. Yeah. We should take a minute to talk about that. There we go. So (laughs) what do you mean? Oh boy. So Evan has started his own little uh, video vlog on YouTube, correct? Yeah. And how do people find it? Let's talk about that first. Just type in my name on YouTube. Evan Kongvold. Yep. And how do you spell Kongvold again? K-O-N-G-V-O-L-D. All right. It's a tough one, I know. I know. Yeah, you know yeah. So, <laughs> But it is, I got to tell you, I love how you edit stuff, and it makes me laugh every time I watched it. And I was on there the other day, and you did a vlog about morning routines. Yep. So I wanted to dig into this a little bit, because everybody who's listening right now has a morning routine, including you and, and myself. Yeah. Right? So I just want to see... how. So your morning routine, just the, like the, the first part of the morning, like getting up and getting ready for the day. Yeah. Is there certain things that have to be done in a certain order? Otherwise, you're like out of, out of funk. You're, you're... There isn't anything that I have to do, but there are things that I usually do. Okay. Like when I wake up, I usually get my phone mm-hmm. and then I lay back down and then I either go on YouTube and then I watch a few different vlogs. Um, so I watch them in the morning, and then I get out of bed, and then I get food. But other than that, like... All right. Well, let's go a little bit more finite into this, all right? So here's the question. When you go, let's say you go in to get ready for the day. Do you brush your teeth before you take a shower or after you take a shower? During. <laughs> what the, do you brush your teeth in the shower? Yeah, I'm saving time. You really do? Yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> That's fascinating to me. What? No, I don't know. I don't want to know what else to do in the shower. <laughs> That's awesome. So do you brush with your left hand or your right hand? Right hand. Right hand. Could you brush with your left hand? Is that a, a, a dexterity thing or is it just a... I don't know. I've never tried. Okay. I'm going to try that You're going to try that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm wondering, like, we get into these routines, right? So honestly... I have tried this before. So I'll take a shower and go in to get dressed. When I get dressed and it's time to put on my socks and shoes, I will do right sock, left sock, right shoe, 
left shoe. That's just how I do it every day. I, I just don't think about it. <laughs> so one day I was like, why do I do that? So I decided that I would try to do it differently. And I would do left sock, left shoe, right sock, right shoe. What? Yeah. Silly. And you said, look, the, fa- the look on your <laughs> face right now, and this is why I was digging into this, because you made me think about this when you did the uh, vlog the other day on morning routines. And, and it, it got me thinking on how structured are we in certain things that make no sense. And to break that structure totally freaks us out. Like putting your socks and shoes on in a different order. Yeah. Right? So is there something like that that you're just like, it just needs to be done that way? I have to brush my teeth after I eat. Okay. You I can't I can't brush my teeth before or I'll brush my teeth again. You'll do it again. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Now I'll do it first thing in the morning. You know, just yeah. because it's rank. <laughs> 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 you gotta get it gone, man. There's yeah. some, there's stuff in I there. I like the should... minty taste in my mouth. Yes. So I usually eat and then brush. I got it. So. I you know, it's it's funny. And I think having structure is good for us and routines is good for us, but I also would challenge us all to think about some of the routines that we're doing. And are we too structured? Do we need to break out of a certain routine? You know? Yeah. And I guess that's what got me thinking after I listened to your... So here is one, okay? So I know uh, a guy. He is my age, right about my age, right? And since he's been young, when he gets dressed, he tucks his T-shirt into his pants. So I'll have a pair of uh, pants on and a belt, and I'll have a T-shirt, and I'll tuck his T-shirt in, right? Okay. Okay. Now... If you saw a guy my age with a pair of khakis on with a t-shirt tucked into it, what's what are you thinking? Anything there? I think he's dressing a few years older than he actually is. Okay. That's I agree with you. Yeah. So he's a friend of mine. So I always bust his chops because <laughs> he makes me like he's awesome. He's a great guy. Yeah. So I'm always busting his chops. And I bust his chops so much about it that every once in a while he'll actually untuck it and he'll be like, hey, look at me. And then I'll see him. <laughs> but then he has to tuck it right back in again. Because he's really? totally freaking him out that it's untucked. Because it's a routine that he has started, right? Yeah. And he just, it's got to be in. He's an innie, <laughs> not an <laughs> LB. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but that got me thinking about this. So the way we dress today, okay? Mm-hmm. So back in the 50s, if you think back of, of pictures and images from years gone by, what did guys wear all the time when they went to work? You've seen it in movies. I know you didn't live it. Um, well, it depends on what job. Let's say an office job. They wore a suit. A suit. Okay. Yeah. And then it changed, right? Yeah. And it changed to kind of like khakis, button down yeah. shirt, maybe a tie. Yeah. Then it changed to khakis and just a button down shirt. Mm-hmm. And then it changed to jeans and a polo. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And now what do you think is probably more common for like office jobs and, and techie jobs and stuff like that? Shorts. Yeah. Flip flops. Whatever. T shirt. Whatever. Yeah. Right. So the question I want to ask you is do you think so first off, how would you dress go into an office job? Or how would you want to dress? Let's start there. I would wear khakis with a button down. Okay. Would you wear a tie? If they didn't require it, no, I wouldn't. Okay. Do you think that wearing a tie would cre- would make you act any different or create a different environment? Let me ask you that. I guess it could create more of a professional environment. Okay. All right. Maybe, but okay. more uncomfortable for you. So do you think there's anything lost by by professional businesses going to a very casual environment? Is there something lost or is that a gain, let's say? I don't think there's a loss to it, no. Okay. All right. I just wonder because at, so like where I work, right, during the day, yeah. uh, there are people who wear ties. There's some people who wear suits and things. And one of the ideas behind uh, wearing a tie that the owner has said is that if people wear a tie, then they're more focused and they treat it, uh, their job with more respect. You know, mm-hmm. and so I just wondered if, from your viewpoint as a younger guy, right, coming into the workforce, if you saw that that that's probably true, but yet you just don't want to, or if you think it just doesn't matter. So I don't know. It's just a random thought that I was thinking. So yeah, I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. I think something is lost on the on that respect and dressing nice like they used to. You see guys out. Uh, shoveling snow in a three-piece suit and a top hat in the, in the old <laughs> photos. You're like, what the heck is wrong with those guys, yeah. you know? 
So, but then again, that was probably the only set of clothes that they had back then too. You yeah, know, depression era or whatever. <laughs> so, but I don't know. So, anyways, I'm all over the board today, as you can tell, Evan. Yeah, nothing in specific. I'm like all over. All kinds of thoughts have been going through my head. I've been writing down things like crazy. So, I want to ask you a question that you might not be able to come up with an answer, but I'm hoping that you can. Okay. All right. So, what, if anything, in recent days? Have you seen or heard that has inspired you? Oh boy! I know it's a it's a deep question, but you're coming out of uh, you're about to graduate, right? So you're yeah. looking for where to go and things like that. And sometimes it takes some inspiration to get you excited about something, uh, whatever it might be. So has there been something that has inspired you recently? I don't know if there's anything that has been that has inspired me recently. Okay. Um, I get, I mean, to, when I started the vlog, yeah, I watched a video of a guy, he, and he was saying, he was just talking about how he started his vlog. Okay. And how he was horrible at it, but then he got better. Yeah. And that inspired me to step out and to start my vlog. Yeah. So I guess you could count that, but that okay. was like two weeks ago now. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, that was, and I would count that as more of an encouragement. Right? Kind of yeah. encouraging. I guess when I say inspiring, and this is a tough question, I probably shouldn't have just popped it on you because yeah. it is a deep one. <laughs> but I'm wondering for all of us, uh, for all of us here, um, you know, who have we been inspired by? What's something that has we have seen or heard that helped us create a, a, a vision, I guess, for what we could do or be part of or something like that? And I guess that's where I was going. So I saw a video the other day that made me think about this, and you saw it as well. And maybe you remember the guy's name. We definitely want to put him in the show notes. What was the guy's name? Jeremy Cowart. Is that what his name was? Yeah. Jeremy Cowart. Is it yeah. C-O-W-A-R-T? Yes. Do you know? Okay. Yep. We're going to have to look him up and get him in the show notes. All right. And for all of our listeners, you're going to have to go on to our website and link on this guy's stuff because his video, did you find that video inspirational? Yeah. I saw it before we watched it. Oh, at that did. event, yeah. Okay. Because he, he's one of my favorite photographers. Okay. And I keep up with him all the time, and he posted it a while ago. Yeah. And I watched it, and I, I thought it was awesome. Why don't you give our, our listeners a little recap of what the video was about and why you thought it was inspirational? Well, he just talked about um, all the different things that he overcame. When he was younger, he believed that he couldn't do something. Mm -hmm. um, every time he tried to do something, he convinced himself that he couldn't. Right. Um, so he eventually decided to sit down with something and just pound it out until he could do something. Right. Um, and now he has multiple different things that he's doing now mm -hmm. that he is doing because he told himself that he could. Right. And it was his parents, uh, that I recall that kept encouraging yeah. him, right? right. To step out because he kept on saying, I can't, I can't. And his yeah. father kept on saying that, you know, he had the strength through God, right? Yeah. God strengthens him and he could do anything that he wanted to. And now the things that he's doing, doors open along the way. And now he's doing things that are changing the world, which are amazing. And through that whole video, he kept on saying, like, even when he was a professional photographer shooting, uh, uh, photos of stars, when they asked him to do something else, he was like, oh, I can't. Like even then, yeah. you think I can't goes away, but it doesn't go away. Yeah. Right. And I thought that was, to me, it was inspiring because it was another great story of somebody who kept pers uh, pushing through the I can'ts and, and the things that scared him. You know? Yeah. So, but I don't know. Another random thought. And uh, so I have one more random thought for, for this episode with you. All right. Okay. And this is an, this is a Andy Rooney. Uh, you know how I use my Andy Rooney's, yep. right? But anyways, Andy Rooney said, I have learned that we should be glad God doesn't give us everything we ask for. We should be glad that God doesn't give us everything we ask for. What do you think about that? I think that it's true. Now, why? why? Because uh, people that get everything are very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> simply because they get whatever they want and you don't and, and they rub it in your i mean they might not meaningly rub it in your face but they mm -hmm. think that they're better than everyone okay all right now are you talking about material things or also other things you're talking about everything that's just whatever they want they i get mean when, they... whenever you get whatever you want mm -hmm. and you don't experience loss or not having something yes then you your character doesn't grow as much i guess i love it 
I 100% agree with you. In fact, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day, that even when you're at the stage of your life where you're, you are interested in finding a girlfriend or a, you know, a future wife or husband for whatever, I think that even then, when you're asking and asking, maybe there's a part that God doesn't give it to you because there's a growth period in there that we need to have so that then when we have the opportunity, we truly will cherish it. Yeah. Or success, right? We hope and hope and pray for success, right? But we don't get it. Maybe because if we get it right now, we're not going to be able to handle it and know how to, you know, control it. It might run away and we would be one of those prideful jerks like you were just saying. Yeah. That would be rubbing it in people's face because you're like, yeah, I'm so awesome that I just get this stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm amazing. Yeah. You know? So I don't know. Is that kind of tracking? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So that's all I have for today, Ev. I don't know. Any random thoughts on your side before we wrap this thing up? No. No? no. You're going to be so proud of me. And the reason why is because I actually kept us underneath the time limit. That I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love it when you're happy with me. So, But very good. Well, we thank everybody for joining us for another episode of Generation Viewpoint. We hope that we, you enjoy the rest of your week, seeing that it's a Monday, right? Yeah. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in our next episode. So have a great week. See ya. Remember, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. And as always, thanks for being awesome.